do to have a healthy, good, productive, etc., relationship with my advisor. This is a three plus three thumbs up. Okay, so if you see me in somebody like a Yoda character, old, everybody <laughs> knows who that is. Anybody not know who that is? Let me move on. Okay, single Yoda. them out. Huh? Single them out. <laughs> yeah, single them out. <laughs> yes, uh, Yoda. How would you? How, so, what what are your tips? And thoughts about how to have, have healthy if you see me as, as a yoda style how do you see me how, how should one communicate how should one set goals and then do daily work anyone want to throw out a couple items here prequel yoda or original yoda uh <laughs> he, he's holding a lightsaber so that would be uh prequel right so in the originals he never really wields any he doesn't wield a saber To have a healthy, how, what's a healthy way to communicate with Yoda? I don't know. I don't know that that's the best metaphor or how I would want a PhD advisor be, if it's Yoda because he's kind of like this mystical oracle of knowledge that just kind of spouts things out. Mm -hmm. and so how, do, how does Luke communicate with Yoda? Doesn't he just hang on his back? Yeah, <laughs> which was actually one of my uh, one of my cosplay costumes when I ran Disney the Disney half marathon was I, I had the backpack and I had the Yoda on the back. So communication, you you would receive instructions from from your advisor. That'd be a, a good way, right? Luke gets told what to do. Yeah, um, and he goes through this, the series of things. Goal setting, Yoda sets the goals, right? So you know, I would be setting the goals for you. And the daily work is for you to practice and hone your skills to get the work done, right? So you, but you would agree that all this comes very, very top down. The other example I would rather have, this is Attack of the Clones relationship, <coughs> which is somebody like uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin. You know, Anakin and Obi-Wan, they fight in the third prequel, not the second one. They're actually, they, they chafe at times, but there's, what's the relationship between these two characters? They're friends, but there's clearly a, a relationship, and one's pulling the other one along, correct? Mm -hmm. They fight alongside each other. They tackle problems together. But there is there is a clear hierarchy in terms of, you know, somebody has is, is leading the mission. However, Anakin does have a role not only in just slashing and killing droids, but he's, he's got a role in how they're going to go about doing it, right? And so... Um, this I think so. If you had a relationship like this, where Anakin and Obi want to communicate, well, what what are some what are some good communication styles that happen between them? This, Anakin, I think you would agree, does let Obi Wan knows what he's thinking about, <laughs> even if it's something, even when he disagrees with Obi Wan, or when he chafes at what the Council wants him to do, he lets him know. He always has a response for what Obi Wan has to say. Yeah. You know, that's that's definitely Obi Wan's perspective. So this is, he has a lot of opinions, but it's okay, right? It's not like he tells him to just not have opinions. Mm -hmm. He expects that because he even knows eventually he, he wants him to become a Jedi himself, right? So uh, the communication between them is a lot more back and forth, and the conversation there. there but I think what Obi Wan so he does let Anakin know what he's thinking, but on Anakin's part, he has to also be open for criticism, right? Obi-Wan's job in this relationship is to provide feedback, and at times the feedback will be critical. Not critical just to make Anakin feel bad. No, he's critical to help him get better, right? If he thinks he's going down a path that doesn't need to be. So I think that for, from a way to have a healthy conversation with me is I want to hear your opinions, right? I think it's good to have a good back and forth. I don't have to agree with you. You don't have to agree with me, and that's good. I'd like to think that we're tackling things together. It's not like I'm telling you where to go, but we are working on stuff. We're getting there together. But you have to be open to criticism. That is just going to be a part of the process. I think it's a healthy part. One thing, I think just as a practical thing, is to give me context. As you know, as you're switching back and forth between stuff, it's okay to start at the very beginning. Hey, here's a reminder. We're running this study. Here's where I got 50 people. They're from the School of Dentistry. They're going to go do X, Y, and Z because I... If you want, you can write it up on the board behind you. You can 
send it to me an email beforehand. All those things are good things, okay? The second thing I think that would be good when I think about what's useful is to be agile and agile in the capital A stance, you know, agile uh, software development. Part of that is failing fast. So that's why I'm, I will push each of you to fail as quickly as possible. Uh, don't, don't try to big, build something big, right? Just prototype, iterate, iterate, iterate. That's my favorite word, you know that. And then being open to change. I think Mohan and I had a very interesting conversation with um, EVPI last week where they wanted to change the project and they were really afraid that we'd be ver we were very upset. Uh, they even called us up, they even sent a message later, goes, I'm not sure whether we upset you by changing the direction of the process. Can we have a phone call? Because I don't want us to, to be on a bad footing with each other. And I think our meeting, our, our response is, well, you know, we expect change and if you change it again in two weeks, so be it, that's okay. So phrases that I like to hear are, so here's an idea that I've had. What? So you didn't say it? Okay, because I bolded these words. Uh, here's an idea that I've had. How can I get better? So the metacognitive concept of asking how you can get better. I think that's a really good one. Here's my plan for the semester and where I'm at. And so for that, it actually lends to the next question, which I thought would be useful that you all ask is, how can I be more productive, stay on track with my research? And this is where I thought I could get your feedback on how you can do this. And I never wrote down really where I typically see expectations for a PhD. This is like the first time I did that was just a few minutes ago. So I thought this would be good to do that. This is very ambitious, but this is something that I think would be a good set of uh, timeline. So in year one, being a second author on a submission would be ideal, it would be good, and being able to conduct your first study. In year two, being able to first author submission, because usually this are, you're writing, you're doing your master's if during this time, you're doing a lot of classes. And then after that, year three is when the qualifying exam typically happens, four is proposal, and then five, six, you'll be finishing up, hopefully, and demonstrating scholarship and mentorship being graduate. So my question to you, based on where you are in your careers, here, where, where you see yourself on this line, how can you be more productive and stay on track for your next milestone? So if you see where you are, where you where your next tick is, and if you haven't done everything the previous ticks, I understand that, that's, that's okay. But what's gonna help you, looking forward, be more productive? So we're gonna do the same thing, let me go grab um, post it notes and we can do the thing, same thing because I think make like a monthly or um, make a monthly overall achievements goal and break up the weeks to slowly build towards it. Okay, to break break up time into chunks. Time, yeah. okay, I love that. That's a great one. Okay, so let's do time. We'll call it sort of time management, but there, there, there there's um, so you're breaking up a period of time so that into smaller into chunks that you can mm -hmm. work towards, right? Okay, so. All right, next up would be Jacob. Okay. Um, I said, keep a central theme so paper I use for my studies can help me when writing calls. Okay, all right. Um, don't be afraid to try and run a study and fail or think it is a waste of time. Early on it helps slowing the process so you can move faster later. Okay, that's, that's all right, so the, the time segmentation, what, what was this one here, keep a central theme, so. Okay. Work on a central theme. Central theme. Okay. Uh, I said, uh, don't try to make my studies overly complex. Fewer restrictions and less dev time will help me to write faster and sooner. All right. Simple design. Okay. I agree. Simple is a great target, if at all possible. If I uh, um, and then I said, try to make calls a publish with their work. Okay, excellent. What have you? That's what I was trying to see. Call publish. Okay, all right. Next person up would be, I believe, Mohan. Mm -hmm. Track you? how you are spending time. Okay, time tracking. Okay. Set goals every semester. Goal setting, semesterly goals. 
set internal deadlines. Oh, set internal deadlines. I think that's part of time segmentation. Mm -hmm. Fail so sooner than later. Fail sooner than later. Okay. You also talk about failing here. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about. We'll have one. Actually, you all love this one. <laughs> Fail. I wrote this down. All right. So we'll, we'll make that kind of bridge these two concepts. Yes. Fail is not a bad word. Anything else? You got it? Okay. All right. Set goals and break them down to problems <coughs> with deadlines. Okay. So we'll do that under the goal settings. Having a realistic plan and a stick to it. Plan. Realistic plan and stick to it. Can you put that near the central theme? Time boxing. Time boxing. Okay, time segmentation. Hard deadline, this is for me. <laughs> Having hard deadline. Talk to me about this. How is that different like, than time boxing? Uh, you know, like, uh, sometimes when you have a class, like, if you don't, like, uh, go to the final exam, you will uh, fail the class, and you, like, think, it, like, uh, this is the, this is it. I have to, like, do it mm -hmm. on time. This makes me, like, super motivated. Like, okay. I never miss, like, something like that. So here's the challenging part. If you become a professor, there are yeah. very few hard deadlines. And then uh, stay motivated. Real, real fast, because you own much of your career and what you choose to do. So there's very few things that other people tell you to do. And so you'll have to manufacture a lot of that yourself. Mm -hmm. So as, as the work you do becomes more ambiguous, there will be fewer and fewer of hard deadlines. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, stay motivated, having a supportive uh, advisor and teammates uh, who, can ha discuss, uh, who you can discuss ideas and get help from. Okay, supportive advisor, I think that's a new topic. Uh, pay attention to physical health and exercise to avoid getting sick because otherwise you will miss. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, something else that I could think of is uh, kind of like using the score system. It could be helpful for people who are competitive like, <laughs> and uh, like enjoy like just collecting points. <laughs> okay, so you want a gamification of what? Of so, what? like gamifications, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just throwing out ideas, and we, we can we, and, and we can discuss. Okay. All right, hang. So come up with a semester schedule. Semester schedule. All right. So we'll talk about goals. A schedule. That's time segmentation. The keep reading papers to learn the content sketches of the their own research questions and some standardized the metrics. All right. So. Read research papers. All right, I'm going to have a similar one. I think it's aligned with mine. Fall in love with the academy. Academy means academia, right? The academy of learning. And you have to really love that because when you do, then you naturally want to read up on papers because it interests you. You naturally want to come listen to speakers that come talk because you just want to learn. It's set, it, this is probably the, if you do go into industry, it becomes very, very rare where. You get to walk into your day and you just get to sit around and learn all day long and that's rewarded and applauded, right? I think to your point, it's this falling in love with why you're here. So write, uh, write down to summarize what you have found or learned from the papers. Oh, okay. Good. All so right. This one is for the study. Recognize the potential risk in your study and uh, discuss to find a solution. Maybe under simple design there. Okay. I'm going to write this as write every day. Because that's a phrase you, you all have heard me say. All right. We've heard from everybody. Now it's just you and Stevie. Yep. Um, create study schedules with collaborators. Okay. So is there any, is there, do we have a scheduling one? So. <coughs> schedule. That's a good point because there's also scheduling your proposal, your qualifiers, all those things require more than just you. Mm -hmm. And then I write on a regular basis. Write on a regular basis. Let's work in parallel, which I was bad at this past year. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's an interesting one. Okay, so. Working parallel, that's a new one. 
Okay. You, when you say work in parallel, you mean? If you have something big like your fault fires or a proposal, don't let that overtake all of your productivity time. You can work on it. That sounds conceptually very, I think everybody would agree to that. How practically though, I find that that becomes really, really hard. How, how do you have any thoughts about that? Um, well, I tracked what I did every day, and I think I it would have helped me not on some days not to do my proposal every day because there were there were a few months where I worked on it every single day, um, and I don't know that that was necessary. So just having a day where you set aside this is the day I'm going to do X, Y, and Z on this day every week, I think that would help would have helped me more. Do you have any comments? Something that I just remember, like, uh, because you said not every day, I think sometimes you are having, like, too much meetings. Okay. Like, like it takes, like, lots of time, like. Mm-hmm. Okay. Meetings, so, so, if you, do you have a suggestion that, okay, so, revisit meetings? You want to write that down? Mm -hmm. Let me do that. All right. I have meet with committee regularly. Meet with committee that's a separate. Huh? That's a separate yeah. thing. That's Com yeah, committee communication. Okay. And then stay up to date on conference and journal deadlines. That's meetings. Yeah. Revisit meetings. Was your awesome mm -hmm. schedule? I think that would go under okay. schedule. Schedule. All right. So I have a huge travel board. For what? <laughs> For what all the uh, to-do items. Uh -huh. uh, how do we? Is that Scheduling maybe. So I have to go outside and take a walk during work. Ah, physical and mental health. I, I wrote that down. Uh, yes, by the way, today, Steve and I got over 3,000 steps. So that, that because there's some, that helps the, the CISE average by <laughs> 600 for this week. So good job. You divide by seven. Uh, yeah, so it's 400 steps. Yeah. Have, have internal deadlines. Have internal deadlines. We talked about that with time sanctification. Mm -hmm. right. Talk to your advisor more often. More often talk to your advisor. Well, maybe I'll talk to you. Is that under communication? There's a committee there's section. Committee communication. So, so we'll just talk about this advisor plus committee. Okay. So have read paper or go to talk from different views and get inspiration from your own work. Beautiful. Love it. Uh, this is not the advice, but it's just what I do. Just okay. work during weekend and evening. <laughs> <laughs> so this work for you. This does not necessarily work for other people, right? Yeah. Okay, this would be under scheduling. I think part of this is knowing yourself and where you work the best, mm -hmm. right? Some people don't want to do that. And so it, I think it's about how you segment out your time and what works for you. Yeah. For right? me, it's very hard because I work, my, I'm most productive after midnight and mm -hmm. I can't I like can to tell. stay up. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Mm, next day is a set a little bit of high goals and push it to Ooh, goal setting i love high goals and that's what okrs they help us get right mm -hmm. the only other two things that i had here was own your work like this is yours now you should be doing it because you this is something you're passionate about and you want to do this because this is going to be your dissertations your research papers you're going to be up there talking about it you don't represent me you represent in this work and this group and this idea and your and especially specifically you so i would really this to me is if you don't feel like you own it then that's the root problem if you don't if you're not passionate about what you're doing that's like that's the root problem we need to get that thing fixed before because if you're already passionate a lot of these other things in my mind okay and the other part how many people have worked before like a like a formal job at a company 
Not internship, no, a, a full time. Houses. Huh? Paid in houses. Paid in houses? Oh, yeah? Okay. For how long? Uh, just for one, like, summer. Okay, so summer painting houses? Um, I worked for a um, cable company. Okay. For about, I was an intern, then I switched over to an um, independent contractor for about a year and a half, then I stopped for school. Okay, so what were you doing? As, like, what type of stuff were you, was part of your job? Um, so I had to like manage like the accounts. Like I had to add like packages, like um mm -hmm. H HBO and stuff to the accounts. And then I like manage the phone books. Um, we adjusted and formatted everything. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Okay. I worked as a software engineer in startup, and I was cook in wing zone. I did not know <laughs> that. <laughs> Which one were you better at? <laughs> 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 I, I like cooking, so I was I was good in both. Okay, <laughs> we now have our own cook at our next gathering. Skill. Oh, we need to we need to get we need to do end of semester. Mm -hmm. Definitely end of semester. Your social thoughts. So. <laughs> I was gonna social czar up a, a refrigerator cleanup before we're all done. We maybe we'll do that lead up to social. Work. So the the reason I ask that is there's some parts of this I do think it's valuable to treat this like a job. Yes, you want to fall in love with the academy, but some parts in terms of communicating with each other, being on time for meetings, these sort of things, that that part, I think has, it's good to think about. Because at some level, there is a employee, you know, I fill out employee, employer, advise, you know, their forms I have to fill out. So treating some of these elements as a job, where you're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna be a professional about the work that I do. I understand that, you know, you might, I do great after midnight. I, you know, I'm also up past midnight, every night working, however, People communicate at certain times, and so I gotta be at a nine o'clock meeting. I gotta be at a nine o'clock meeting, right? Okay, so those are my two bits there. So I think you know, we've come up with a lot of great stuff here. Right? So we'll go catalog all the stuff and send that out. We'll put this inside the startup. Any other thoughts about how to how to make progress? I see some things, some common things about goal setting and time. There's some things about communication, but also the holistic part about uh, being healthy. Any other thoughts about this before we go on? I think, um, in the interest of time, we can, I think we're done. We're, we'll go ahead and hit stop on that. Thank you so much.